Yo, what's good? It's Andrew from ProducerSociety.com. Today I'm talking to you about how to get the best free piano sounds in GarageBand. So I'm going to tell you right off the bat that the two best free piano sounds that I've found thus far are the Forefront Piano and Spitfire Audio Labs Soft Piano. Both these pianos are pretty good for what they cost, nothing. But uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with the original Steinway Grand Piano, which comes in stock in GarageBand. However, there's nothing that there's nothing that you can really do that's going to make it as good as as a superior plugin, I would say. But with that said, you know there's a lot that you can do. You know, much of the things I'm going to talk about here are also applicable to the two pianos that I mentioned. So you can find both those pianos at the link in my article, the Forefront Piano and Spitfire Audio Lab. Both of them are free. Um, so in terms of what you want to do to get a piano to sound a bit better, um, I would say it's mostly reverb, ambiance, delay. Uh, you can use a panning technique, some EQ, and then also compression and parallel compression if you really feel it's necessary. Um, but yeah, those are the main things. So what I would do is if I wanted to get it to sound a bit better. So I usually increase the reverb right away up to about six. Ambience around four. Delay around three. And then what you want to do. I really like the major seven sus chords. They sound dope. But yeah, you go into your channel EQ like this go down into your keyboards and you can choose one of these presets depending on which one you'd like. I kind of like the piano bright, although I might bring that down just a tad. Um, But yeah, you can you can really mess around with the plugins and find out which one you like best, or rather the presets. So you could try the piano high too if you wanted. A lot of that depends on what you're playing too. Like if you're playing something that's very low and evil sounding. It's not that evil, but you know what I'm saying. So you just go down in here and then go piano low. Maybe you drop that down just a tad, bring that up. Maybe jack up the highs just a wee bit. You can already see that it's starting to make a difference, right? And then go down into your compressor as well. Use the stock one. Don't, don't overcomplicate this stuff, you know? Just use the, the pop piano. Maybe bring down one of these if you wanted to. Increase the gain if you wanted to. I tend that you want to go easy on the, the compression in when using a piano. I find it gets distortion easily. But anyway... Yeah, so that, those are the main things that you can do. Also, uh, I recommend checking out this plugin from Valhalla, the Valhalla Frequency Echo. So you can see it in a minute if it gets brought up. So here, this is the one I'm talking about. Usually I'll br bring down the delay, the delay to around 0.30, and then uh, I'll have like I'll have one piano panned in the opposite direction, and then the other one in the opposite direction. Um, so yeah. So let, let's, uh, I'll show you the next thing that I would do. This just gives you more, this gives you more opportunities to kind of mix and adjust dynamics. So you have two pianos, one pan to the left and one pan to the right. And then, so let's just record something quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um,
So anyway, that's just some random nonsense. So there we go. Now we got two in the same in uh, the same thing going on, but in opposite directions. And then the volumes they amplify each other, so you're gonna have to turn it down just a wee bit. And um, so what I would do is I would have one with compression and one without. So that's called parallel compression, from what I understand. Um, and that's what I would do. You don't want to have too much compression on this stuff. You might actually have to increase the volume of the one just to compensate for the, the loss of compression. Conversely, you could also adjust for that using the compressor itself by just adjusting the gain. So yeah, that's another thing that I would do, right? Um, what else you can do is that you can have, um, you can have, uh, what was I going to say? You got your delay. Um, you can do what's called the Haas trick. So what that means is you just have the delay turned off on one of them, and then you have the delay on the other one turned on, and then you would usually use a, a derivative of the, the BPMs. So if you, if you go online and type in like delay, delay time calculator, you can find out what delay that you should be using. Um, and it'll give you like a, an, a fraction in terms of what you can use. I've talked about this in other videos before, which you can check out. Um, but yeah, that's, that's called the Haas trick. And then you just have delay on one and then not the other. And they're panned in the opposite directions. And that just gives it a, a more spacious effect. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I would do. And also when you when you have two of the same, this works the best when you've actually recorded a, a real piano rather than a VST piano. Ugh, sorry, I'm kind of tired today. I just quit drinking coffee, so my brain hardly works. Um, but uh, yeah, so you would you know if when you have two of the same, you're gonna have to account for that in your plugin. So you know. Plugins, they tend to have a multiplicative effect in dynamics pr processors and all that. So if you have reverb high on one and then reverb high on the other, you might end up with something that's kind of washed out. So you could turn down the one in comparison to the other. You feel me? But uh, all that stuff, with all that said, what you want to do is if you wanted a superior point piano, which is going to be a much better way of going about any of this, really, so you can use something like the soft piano. <laughs> Um, I find the soft piano from Spitfire Audio. It tends to be, it tends to be a bit warm, I would say, but you can account for that in your EQ, of course. So yeah, let's get some compression and some, and some uh, EQ on this. I'd usually put the compressor first and then the channel key EQ after. Um, go down into the piano. You can adjust those settings if you want. And then with your channel EQ, you can do use something like uh, like the piano high. I would use the piano high for the for the Spitfire Audio one, just because it tends to be a bit uh, warm, as I already said. And maybe just attenuate these frequencies just like a wee bit, bring that a bit forward like that. And then um, I find that gives it a better sound. Um, you have to watch out though, because you can hear the, the, the fingers hitting the keys, which is actually pretty realistic, but, um, it, it can be somewhat invasive if you go a little bit too hot, too hardcore with the high boosts and also with the compression as well. Whoops. Regardless, you know, the, the Spitfire Audio Lab soft piano is a, is a really nice sounding piano.
for real. Sounds sounds pretty good for what you get for free. I um, mean, just get it on their website. Check out the article in the video. Excuse me, in the video description, and um, you know you can find all that stuff there. So this is a four front piano. <laughs> So you notice right away it tends to sound a little bit better. And as I said in the article, you know, I would go about compressing and using channel EQ a little bit differently. So because it sounds a lot different, I find the forefront piano is a little more mid-range focused. Um, so what I would do is I would use the something like the grand piano EQ and then maybe drop down those, jack these up a little, little wee bit, maybe put some low end on it like that like this, I would say actually, maybe even attenuate that a bit. Yeah, so those are the two pianos that you can try out, and really the same rules apply that I that I showed you for the for the Steinway Grand Piano. Additionally, you can check out uh, Complete Control from Native Instruments. They have a piano that comes with it. Um, I already talked about it in one of my my art, or excuse me, my video on uh, the best free plugins for GarageBand. I really think that's probably the best bundle of free plugins that you can get. Um, the Complete Control it comes with a lot of good stuff like flutes. Um, the piano that comes with it, it isn't a standard piano. However, it does have a lot of really cool um, features. The analog, oh, what was it called again? I forget what it's called. Ethereal Dreams, I think it's called. But either way, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you can get. And uh, another important thing I think it's worth mentioning is that, you know, there's no free plugin that you're ever going to get. It's going to sound good as as good as a paid plugin. So just keep in mind that if you want something, if you want to get serious about this stuff uh j just pay for a plug-in like just be just pay for one man like people put a, put a lot of work into making this stuff so just just pay for one you, you know and not only that you're going to appreciate it more and you're going to play with it around you're going to play uh you're going to play with it more you know what i mean you're going to use it a lot more you have you don't take it for granted as much but anyway i would say this is all that's all for this video and uh it's actually the second time I've done it because I messed it up before I didn't record the computer audio. But um, yeah, that's it. I, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, you know, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you in the next video. All right. Peace.